Well, for one thing, Ahmed is the only Turk I know who has a highly developed sense of humor. Oh, well, you know, if you find yourself in, say, Budapest up at 5 o'clock in the morning wandering around to every rock and roll joint and strip club that's still open, that's, that's quintessential on it, you know. He's the strangest thing because he's like this walking advertisement for a, a gentleman, and then he starts talking like an old jazz player. My first impression of Ahmed Erdogan was He's like this cool guy. He had a cigarette in his hand singing my songs, you know, like, I like that beat, I like that beat, not in his head. And it was so funny because he just, he just fit right in. Certainly women love him. You know, he's one of those men that women will always say, um, you know, he makes you feel when you're with him like that you, you're the, the most important person in the world. You know, but, but I have to say, too, without any hint of, you know, you know, a, a sexual thing, that he makes me feel that way, too, you know. I was thinking I was doing the, what is it called, the Pollux Convention, is that what it's called? A radio kind of convention. It was on, like, a patio in a hotel. And all the radio people were there eating their, you know, hors d'oeuvres and drinking their cocktails and going, great, we got to listen to music. And uh, I got up there and sang, and it was really windy, and there was Amit with his cane, and he lifted up his cane, everybody looked at him. And I got done singing for, like, it's like the gopher seeing his shadow or not. Will it be a good year? You know, will she do well? And he lifted up his cane, he's like, she will be big, or something like that. It was like the Amit Omen, like, oh! <laughs> Everybody bowed, it was great. <laughs> the thing about Amit was that was different, was that he seemed to be enjoying himself. So doing the business and enjoying himself was a really, that was a really new concept. Amit was a cat man. I mean, he, he, he was the cat that had the feeling for the music. I mean, he's a role model. Let's face it, that's what he is. Maybe when he hangs his boots up, I might hang mine up too. By Sylvester never compromising his sexuality, it did create a lot of problems. It was a directive from Fantasy Records to say, Sylvester, we want you and your image to be more like Teddy Pendergrass. They shot this like video with him in a suit and like a little sports car. I was really tired, and he went along with it for a minute, for a minute. Sylvester's response to that was he came to this big, a, a really big, you know, gathering of fantasy and kind of like made his entrance in I think a pink chiffon flowing gown and kind of like sashayed down the staircase and then blew a lot of people away. I took the elevator up to the president's office and uh, marched in and said, you know, you want to change my image? This is my image, and it's what has been and always will be. And here were my paintings hanging on the wall, and then this parade comes by with the Girl Scouts and the Cub Scouts, and the children were cheering for my paintings, I think, you know, because they saw bright colors and because they saw, you know, it was really kind of a fun experience. And then, like an hour later, the priest comes along, and the priest looks at my paintings, and, you know, I could see him judging them. And so, you know, the next minute, he goes and gets the policeman, and the policeman comes and, and says, you have to take those paintings down, or I'm going to take them down. And so I was furious. I was like, well, you know, I'm not going to take them down because you say so, Mr. Policeman go and get the curator of the show and, and have him tell me that. So the policeman runs over and gets the curator and they come over and, and he's like, yeah, you gotta take him down, you gotta take him down and, and you know, the policeman can't arrest us and we're, you know, so my pains were censored and uh, I just went through this whole like anger about, and, and that was like right after I went through this whole thing about like I could never show my art to anyone and then I'm like censored the first time I try to you know, show my art to the public, and so I took him down and went into a rage, and I called, you know, the 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 lawyers, volunteer lawyers for the artists, and they didn't want to handle my case because of, I made too much money, and I had to be destitute for them to like handle my case, and I called the the American Civil Liberties Union, and I did everything I could to like get justice, and you know, I protected myself as best I could, but, you know, I guess I'm sort of over the rage, but, um, you know, you can't show a dick in public. That's the, the point of all this. 
you know, the children can't see a penis. It's ridiculous. 